It's Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. This is the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me is one of the members of the Song Talk Radio action team, Mr. Phil Emery. How are you tonight, Phil? I'm presently accounted for and uh, very excited to be here. Uh, although missing Michael, who's away and sick. Yeah, Michael's not feeling well, so I hope you get better, Mike, and uh, see you next week for sure. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, please send in your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email, and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And uh, please visit us at songtalk.ca to find out how you can be a guest. And uh, of course, before we get to our guest tonight, uh, a couple of house keeping items. Uh, once again, we'd like to invite our listeners to join us for our second annual songwriting challenge. Uh, this year, we're challenging ourselves to write a song where the chord progression never changes. So the three hosts of the show, um, myself, Mike, and Phil, we're each going to write a song for the challenge, and we're going to share our answers to this songwriting challenge on the January 26, 2021 episode. And uh, so far, we've got a few replies in from listeners already um, sharing their songs where the chord progression never changes. And uh, we're going to continue to receive those ones. Um, and we're going to uh, share the songs from our listeners on our February 16th episode. Um, so again, please send your answer to the songwriting challenge. Uh, just uh, write and record a song uh, where the chord progression doesn't change and send your MP3 and your lyric sheet to feedback at songtalk.ca uh, by February 9th. And uh, we'll feature your song on uh, the February 16th show. Yeah, it might be a couple of shows, actually, because... It looks yeah, like depending on how many we get, it, it may in fact be a couple of shows, which will, which will be fantastic. How is, uh, how is your song coming along there, uh, Neil? Uh, I'm currently working on my holiday song, so I haven't touched the songwriting challenge. I have the idea, and I have sort of brainstormed some ideas in a document, but I haven't gone as far as actually writing, you know, anything... The, the song part yeah. of it. I've just sort of got some ideas down. How, how about you, Phil? You know, well, much? it's um, so if, you know, I have a couple of songs that I've been playing around with, uh, trying to decide whether more chords would be worse than fewer chords because sometimes mm -hmm. fewer chords allows you to give a bit more, um, uh, sometimes can actually give you a bit more space, uh, for melodic variations. One thing I think I'm going to do, um, and the one song that I'm thinking of, I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's in if it's in a minor. I think it may be in um, either E minor or G minor, depending on how you're scoring it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But um, is for the chorus, and if not the chorus, then probably the bridge is. I'll keep the chords the same, but change the key. So if you're in C, of course, the relative minor of C would be A minor. So mm -hmm. you could actually do an A minor melody on top of C chords, um, and oh, I believe I that would work. So that's going to be kind of a it's going to be a fun sort of challenge. I mean, I've kind of done that accidentally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done a song and go, oh wow, I've changed keys. What do you know? This will actually be a time when I'm going to actually try to do that. So if it's in minor, then maybe the chorus will be in major. That mm -hmm. would be uh, ideal. Um, but at least, uh, and if not, then the bridge, I think, will go to the relative minor or the relative major, depending on you right, know, right. Uh, yeah, what we start off with. Yeah, as long as the chords are the same, like the, um, it's, yeah. it's really going to be, like for me, the exercise is really going to be melody has to govern all the, the sort of changes, right? So like you say, if you're melodic shape changes if your melodic center sort of changes as long as your chord doesn't then yeah that's, <laughs> you that can, works you can sort of negotiate it and 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 make it work to make your your chorus or your bridge pop out and i realized that i've actually done this already there's a song with the parkdale mm -hmm. hookers called are you lonely uh -huh. where the verse and the chorus are basically the same um uh chords so yeah, i just yeah. basically because i remember trying to trying to go through an applic um you know trying to change the uh, chorus mm -hmm. and and being really specific you know because i think the first started on a third of the chord so i went i think into the sixth or maybe the mm -hmm. tried to do the flat and seventh devo does that a lot the um 
their lead opening notes are very often like a flat and seventh or a seventh or even like the uh Major like the, like a like a semitone down from the root yeah, yeah. like yeah. two octaves up and it's really cool it's very hard huh. to do mm-hmm. um because i've always loved his vocal style i was trying to figure out how he did it hmm. and um so that's that's really good to sort of be conscious of where your first note is on your opening chord it is the third fifth um, yeah. And a great way of actually pulling apart your favorite songs and figuring that out as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I may have to do that exercise a few times and pull apart a few songs and just study them and see how they did it. <laughs> yeah. Because this is something that's definitely going to put me out of my comfort zone because I've never, I rely on chords a lot and chord changes a lot. And my chorus is always a different chord progression than my verse. So it's going to be a challenge <laughs> for me for sure. <laughs> see that just starting off as a punk, you only knew like two chords. So I suppose, you know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. And uh, we we had a fantastic uh, song talk meetup um, just last yeah. night. Uh, Phil hosted the the meetup, and uh, what did you think of the meetup last night, Phil? It was great. It's always really um, exciting, and it's such a positive um, and safe space. Uh, I got a letter actually in from uh, one of the people who was uh, who was at the meetup uh, mm-hmm. last night, and it's um, you know there's different things you can go to. There's like demo with a a date with a demo, I think something, mm, yeah, that, and yeah. they can be A and R people from um, from labels. They can be very brutal and very mm. honest because this is their business. They need to listen to you, and they're going to say, "Listen, if you give this to a record company, they're going to say, look, you can't sing,' and the song's dull, yeah. you know." And but this is a very safe space so that people can come in and bring in songs, and they'll get like supportive um, feedback. And I thought that was great, and some great tunes as well. What yeah. did you think? Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I mean, there's some great talent out there and and some really inventive, interesting songs because I I, I can appreciate, you know, people going to like date with the demo or whatever, and chances are they're going to be very pop radio friendly driven. Mm. You're not going to show up there unless you've got a pop radio friendly thing that you think is potentially a hit, you know, but at our meetup. People bring all sorts of things that are unfinished, <laughs> that are theatrical, that are genre mashing, like beyond anything I've ever heard before. Like it's really, really interesting stuff. And and like you say, like the you know the environment is so supportive and encouraging that I think people feel safe to do that. And 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 we would never say that song is never going to be on the radio. Too bad. Try again. Like go back to the drawing board. We never say that. Like we we're always like yeah. You know, we always got to understand where the songwriter was coming from and address it on that level, not on some arbitrary level of you know is it does it hit this datum line or these checkboxes that we've predetermined? No. Yeah. You look at it from the artist's perspective and see if they pulled off what they were trying to pull off and go from yeah. there. <laughs> and you know everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah. And I think that's what's great. I wish I wish something like this existed when I started off because mm. I think be, I'd be much further along than I am now. Probably. You know, but uh, that's the great thing about songwriting because you always, every time you do it, you go, okay, now I'm starting to get it. And then you go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then you go, oh, wow. it's just constant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're always learning. So that's true. That's, that's an amazing thing about it. And okay. speaking of learning. Speaking of learning and speaking of uh, moving on. Um, we Our guest tonight is author Mark Cowley. Mark Cowley is a hit songwriter, best-selling author, in-demand speaker, songwriting coach, and popular blogger. As a songwriter, his songs have been on more than 16 million records to date, with cuts ranging from Tina Turner, Joe Cocker, Chaka Khan, and Diana, Diana Ross, to Winona Judd, Taylor Dane, Paul Carrick, The Spice Girls, and many more. Through his coaching service, idocoach.com, he has coached thousands of songwriters worldwide. His book, Song Journey, was released in April 2019 and went to number one in six categories on Amazon. Mark is a judge for the UK Songwriting Contest, Nashville Rising Star, Belmont University's Commercial Music Program, and West Coast Songwriter Events. He's also a contributing author to USA Songwriting, Intune Magazine, Songwriter Magazine, a sponsor for the Australian Songwriting Association, and a mentor for the Songwriting Academy UK. Mark joins us tonight from his home in Nashville, Tennessee, to talk about his second book, The Daily Song Journal. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, Mark. Thank you, Thanks for, Thanks for having me. Thanks Appreciate for coming on the show. And that's, I can't believe you made it through that whole intro almost without <laughs> breath. <laughs> without, without taking a breath, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank Hold you on. very much. Hold on. You're a busy guy. Yeah, you got yes. a lot on your resume yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, I, I've spent the last week or so uh, delving into your book, The Song Journey, 
And and the thing that 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 I wanted to ask you right off the bat was that it's kind of like we do on this show, like you're pulling everything songwriting wise out into the consciousness and making, you know, categorizing everything and, and sort of breaking it all apart into little discrete pieces, which is great for learning songwriting. Is that how you started as a songwriter? Were you kind of academic and kind of head driven or did you write songs a lot of the time just from the heart like everyone else does and then find and, 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 and that emerge later you gotta say just by virtue of being ancient you know <laughs> that, that that sort of thing didn't exist i mean there really was nowhere to go for these right. books these how-to videos um i just had to start i played in garage bands made a million mistakes and you know the one foot in front of the other there really was no nowhere to learn like there is now. So I would have to say, no, I did not learn like, mm -hmm. like the way I'm teaching people now. But, but I, I guess the question is, were you thinking about songwriting in an analytical way? The, uh, probably what I did, you guys, when I was listening to your intro, you meant what I would call deconstruction. Like, and let's tear them apart, learn them, put them back together. That's probably as much as I did that's academic. I would learn a song and say, how did they do this? And uh, that got into what I always think of my writer's DNA. Uh, it just got in there in the back of my mind and you do it long enough. And all of a sudden those things you learned, you deconstructed, begin to make their way into your music, you know? And, and so it was much more of that sort of, let's, let's call it more organic than it was mm -hmm. studying because there just wasn't the material out there. I didn't know a single songwriter never met a songwriter, you know, mm. until way later. It right. was a very different world. I mean, there was just, there's so many uh, resources. And I think there was resources out there, but I mean, if you didn't sort of know about them or you didn't read about them, you wouldn't, you would just kind of go blindly along and yeah. uh, stumble, you know? It's a different time now. It's a great time to be able to like find so many uh, resources and places to learn. It's really excellent. I wanted to ask you about, um, because you're, you know, you, you've been teaching this for a long time. So you've been dealing with, you know, different students for, for a long time, for, you know, over the decades. Has the process and the approach to songwriting changed in a significant way over the last like five to 10 years, do you think? Yeah, I think it's constantly changing. The tools are changing, the uh, expectations changing, the business, as you guys know, is always changing. Mm -hmm. uh, the the availability to, to be able to get in front of a publisher or a producer or an artist is very different than when I started. Publishing deals are totally different. So you have to go into it with um, most people I coach now, I really stress social media for them, things they can do on their own and that are free, especially. Those are available to you. None of that was available to me. But what was available is if you could get in front of a great publisher, for instance, they would nurture you. And that could be financially um, every way in the world. They'd really nurture you as a writer. And record labels did it too. I was an artist to begin with. And you could sign to a label and they might put, you know, a quarter of a million dollars in you and know that you may not succeed. Maybe it's going to take two yeah. Oh, uh, Mark is frozen a bit. Oh boy. Yeah, you know, I but I have heard that actually of how um, um, you know companies back would actually give you four albums to get started. Um, sure. Sorry, Mark, you had dropped out there. You just you were saying about how uh, labels would you know invest a quarter million. I think you said. Yeah, they would, you know, on a, on a good day. I mean, they would, if they believed in you, they would, they would figure you may not hit right off, but you will hit eventually and they'll take that risk. And I think the risk factor for publishers and uh, record labels is totally gone these days. I don't see that happening. Uh, well, all the risk is on the artist now. It is. I mean, and artists, some writers and some artists come into a label with their own financing and go, look, I've got this all together. All I need you to do is spread the word. You mm -hmm. use your use your you know power to get my record and everything all over the place. Totally different world. So what about from a songwriting perspective? Like you hear a lot of songwriting nowadays is like 
beat maker plus top liner or written by committee, you know, plus Taylor Swift, um, <laughs> you know, like, is, is, is that different than it was, you know, of course, years ago? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. When I started, um, you know, I didn't know anyone to co-write with. And uh, when I first got a few cuts, a few things, you know, uh, cut by artists, I'd wrote them on my own or maybe with a friend or some, another musician I knew until you got into the world of like publishing business. Uh, I didn't realize that publishers love to put you together with another published songwriter. Mm -hmm. So that now two heads and two resources are better than one. The, the chances of your song getting cut get better. That has gone, you know, viral <laughs> to the, where you see eight people on a song. And one guy brought tea and one's a vibe master and one is a lyricist and one's, a, you know, it, it's gotten a little out of hand, right. but um, that, that's the world we're in, you know, and, and I don't, uh, I don't rail against that ever. I think it's just where we are. You know? So uh, tell us about uh, your latest book. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's called Song Journal, the Daily Song Journal. And, uh, you know, the first book was about, it was sort of, uh, anecdotal coaching. It was based on what I've learned from working with people and, you know, my, my journey, but also the way I coach and the things I, I think are, are good points for songwriters. Uh, but this one, uh, the genesis of it was kind of funny. I didn't intend to write another book. And my wife and I do a lot of like morning reading, just like, you know, devotionals and stuff, things that take, you know, 15 minutes and they're inspirational or motivational. And it just dawned on me one morning about maybe eight months ago, I thought, you know, I've never seen one for songwriters. I've seen journals. I've never seen one that raises a point or a good fact and says, go follow up on it and now write about your experience. And I thought, that's a pretty good idea. And you guys know sometimes from writing songs, sometimes you have a good idea and you think, oh, that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> and you're like, this is a curse. Mm -hmm. This one, I thought, I, you know, I'm, I get fired up about ideas all the time. This one was like, okay, it could be, it could be this, it could be that. And I thought it could be, wow, you could do this for every day of the year, 365 of these. And wow, this hadn't existed. I love this. And I went across the idea of like saying, let's base it off the first one, which was Song Journey and call it the Song Journal. And I thought, this is fun. It all got to be fun until it got to be like day 200. And it was like, wow, <laughs> a lot of stuff to try to impart and follow up on. And 165 pieces of wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happened. Honestly, I hit 200 and I started Googling journals. <laughs> uh, my wife was walking by me in the living room one day and I said, hey, look at this. This guy wrote a 200 day journal. Couldn't I do that? <laughs> and she said, no, come on, you committed. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and, and you've actually got a an action part of this journal as well. So it's not just a, a pieces of wisdom and journaling, but you've actually got an, uh, an actionable part of it, right? Exactly. Yeah, there'll be, uh, and I'm happy to read a, a few for you, but basically what they, and that I wanted to make them random, like morning readings are. I didn't want to go, this month is melody month, mm. or this is music month, or this is whatever. They're totally random, and they deal with, everything I think you need to deal with as a songwriter over the life of mm -hmm. the you have, not just, you know, the fact, not the, not just writing a song. So they're random, but they also have an action to follow up. Like I may tell you about, or I may talk to you about doing something and then I say, go here to watch a YouTube video that illustrates this or that expands this idea and then write your thoughts that day. Tomorrow could be totally different in the journal. Yeah. And it's usually. Hmm. It's a lot to come up with, 365 is, of, is a lot to, you know, was, to come up with. You know, it was COVID inspired. You know, we've talked about that when we first started talking tonight. Yeah, you, you got time on your hands. Uh, I can't do workshops. I, I canceled travel. Um, we had a book tour behind the first book that was Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Oh boy. And we canceled all of it, uh, canceled all of this work and workshops. And I really did sit down and think, what can I do? I, you know, I want to do something. So this kind of played right into it, and I enjoyed the work. It was good. Mm -hmm. Why don't you uh, read one of them, if you have the book yeah. there, and just to kind of give us an idea of what uh, what it's like. And when you guys asked me, I had to go do this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So I tried to make them random, but I did want to grab a couple that I really like. So mm -hmm. this is January 25th, and the journal is – 
the way it's laid out is January 25th is day 25, right? Mm -hmm. But you could pick this up in any any time of the year. Any so, of, year, of course, yeah. April oh, 20, very smart. Yeah, April 23rd, I'm jumping to. That's day 113. So you could start in April if you want. Uh, January 25, know your flow. Ever feel like you're in the same, uh, sorry, in a zone on a writing day? Recognizing this for what it is can be a beautiful thing for a songwriter. I brought it up in the help hurt list earlier in the journal, and it's a great tool for you to figure out how to get there. The important thing is not to break the flow. Those days when you're in a full of ideas, just stay on that path because the smallest deviation can disrupt the flow and it can be really hard to get it back. The action for that day is called go, and it's list some of the things that keep you in the flow, as well as some of the things you do, you do that break it. Um, I mentioned a help hurt list, and that was in the first book. Um, that's one of the best ideas I've ever seen, and it came out of a uh, creative writing thing I read, not a songwriting thing. And it literally was take a, like a legal pad, <clears throat> put a line down the middle, Put a line up at the top to create a margin. On one side, write help. On the other side, write hurt. Every time you write, take a minute when you're finished and go, what helped me today or what hurt me? Mm -hmm. And it can be as simple as, you know, for me, I'll just take myself. When I first learned this, I thought, okay, I had a big breakfast and I kind of bogged down. It was not a good writing day for me. It, it seemed to be slow. Or I got right up, had coffee, didn't say hello to my kids or anybody, went right in the studio, really good day. Um, or it could be, you know, I got on social media and I'm done. You know, I shouldn't have done that. The beauty is um, you, you learn, you know, what helped and what hurt, and you learn to recreate the help side and get rid of the hurt smart. side. Very so you set yourself, up, yeah. set yourself up for a better writing day. Absolutely. And it's, and it's really helpful to write that down because we know these things, yeah. right, internally. We, we know what helps and what hurts. And we, you know, naturally tend to go towards the things that hurt <laughs> more often than we like to admit. But, it's you know, but as soon as you write it down, then it becomes more real for you. Like it becomes it, more concrete. Exactly. It. And as you guys know, writing's hard. I mean, facing a blank page, I will find a way to look for the Yankee score. I'll look for a movie I could watch tonight. <laughs> a laundry to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything to I'm do doing laundry right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can do laundry. I, can, I should shower. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, 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 shelves I, even. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a really neat idea because um, we've, at least I've said this on, on our podcast before, is that in terms of learning stuff, like we, like, you know, like Phil and I, for example, we have day jobs that we do, like we're songwriters and musicians sort of on the side, right? So you've got, a, and a lot of people we know are in that position. So you've got a limited amount of time you can spend in your studio at your piano with your guitar writing songs. And to a certain extent, you'd rather be doing than learning. You know, like, I don't want to take like a whole the big long course on this stuff or, you know, watch hours and hours worth of YouTube videos or anything like that. But if I have, you know, one little page and one little action to follow up on, that's kind of cool. Like it's, it's a neat little thing and I go to it and then I, then I, then I can get to my doing, you know, Thank you. that's what it was meant to do. And mm -hmm. part of that, I have to acknowledge the fact that I coach enough people to, on the first book, I used them as a focus group. And I, and again, on this one. I said, okay, first time, if I were to write a book, what would you like to see in a songwriting book? Most of them knew me and they said, well, talk about your experiences and stories and, and how that gets to learning tools. Second one, I said, what would you like to see here? And a lot of them went, you know, I have trouble reading a book. <laughs> so that was eye opening. And I said, so what would you like? And they went, well, if it were short and gave me something to do, and then tomorrow gave me something else to do that I can look forward to, that'd be good. So that was another element of writing a book like this, of like not like what you just said, yeah. not having the time for most people who are, you know, not full time writers. They, they don't have limited time and um, energy to do this. So give them something really good, I think, I hope, you know, for a day and go to it. Are, are you confronted, Mark, with um, people you mentor or uh, students you have or anything like that where they come into a session with you or a first session with you at least and believe that you can't analyze songs and you can't, you know, really, there's nothing to be studied, like creativity can't be taught, that sort of thing. Like how pervasive is that belief, do you think? 
pretty pervasive. What I do with coaching uh, is a separate sort of thing, but what I do is always try to have at least an email first. Mm -hmm. And the big question is, what's your expectation? And I can usually pick up on the fact someone goes, well, I get them from like what you just said, like, well, this can't be top, but I'll give you a try I've heard <laughs> that. to the to one like, uh, you know, I want to make one hundred thousand uh, dollars in Nashville as a, as a signed writer in my first year. And I'm even willing to move there. I actually got an email that, said that. I wrote back me, too. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's there's some unrealistic expectations. And part of what I do with them coaching, I mean, there are, have been people I don't I turn down to coach. I think this is just unrealistic. And, you know, your opinion is your opinion. And God bless you. But I, I can't get you there. Hmm. And I, when I coach, I don't have a curriculum. So I really do talk to somebody somehow, email or a call and go, OK, yeah, what your what your expectation is something we can work toward. That's good. Um, do you mind if uh, just ask, it's an interesting thing to do the uh, coaching? How long does a coaching session usually take with you? An hour, uh, but I'm passionate, so hour turns into I don't know what, whatever it turns into, uh, depending on the day. You know, but again, so no it, curriculum. So it's like sort of like do you, about a year. Like, do you spend like about a year with them, or is it just as long as? It, you know, it really it really depends on. Uh, the client, I'll call them clients as songwriters, mm -hmm. but I have some who've been with me now maybe six years. Mm -hmm. And it may start with um, a four session thing, which is once a week for four weeks. And then it may drift to once every two weeks, once a month, then whenever you need me. Kind of thing. Oh, pretty much. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, I am hearing the band come in. So I'm. Yeah, I the band wants to go home. Goodness, we are <laughs> all out of time for this show. Um, so it was great to have you on, uh, Mark. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can listeners find, find out more about you? Uh, I have two websites. One is uh, markcauley.com. That's a personal one, which is a lot of information. The other is idocoach.com, which is my coaching site. And either one of those will tell you a lot about what I'm up to uh, or what you could expect in coaching and how to find the books and all that. And, so, and the name of the book again is the daily song journal the daily song journal and that's available at amazon and all those it is, yeah it's been yep. doing well on amazon so far yep. so. and uh and we'll certainly put it on our resources page on our website right Indeed. Indeed. guys good to meet you and, and nice to spend time with you I, I hope you'll come back on the show again because you have a big brain we'd like to pick it a bit more if you don't mind <laughs> a big head <laughs> How much brain is in there, but thank you. <laughs> we'll take out. whatever we can get. Yeah. And in thank the meantime, we want to hear from you, our listeners. So please send your comments on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to at Song Talk Radio or send us an email at feedback at songtalk.ca. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. Now that we're all virtual, we're all in little boxes on YouTube. It's great fun. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. And don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at songtalk.ca. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services as the songwriting journey <laughs> and we mentioned on song talk radio on our resources page at songtalk.ca and wherever you are in the world please join us online via zoom at our next monthly song talk meetup it's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup stop by songtalk.ca for the link you can follow me at neilmodi.com you can follow phil at philemory.ca and mark what's your what's your favorite social media channel of choice uh facebook please. Facebook, Mark Holly on Facebook. Perfect. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. And uh, be sure to stop by the website, songtalk.ca, browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Stay safe, everyone, and keep on writing. Good night. Thank you guys. That's great. And yeah, a really cool book, Mark. It's a great, great idea. And it's so perfect for today's world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for what you guys are doing. You're helping songwriters big time. 
yeah that's what we like to do that's yeah. what we like to do yeah we'll definitely have you back on the show um anytime, anytime. um to really discuss we we just we did a show a few weeks back about songwriting do's and don'ts oh yeah it would be great for that a little list we found on the disc makers blog and uh, you know those sorts of things <laughs> uh, you know what one of the best things i ever heard about that was i didn't say it but i was on a panel one time and uh there was a nashville writer who'll go unnamed but people said so if you had to say one big you know don't you know one thing in your whole career what would it be? And it went down the panel and people were going, well, don't do this particular thing. It got to this one writer and he went, don't be a dick. Yeah. That's very important. <laughs> very, very good point. All he had to say, that was pretty much the wisdom of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that goes for all parts of your life, really. You yeah, seriously. That's, that's more than songwriting. Yeah, it's, it's some good wisdom. For yeah, sure. yeah. You can write a song about someone who is, you know. It's always yeah. good. But, that's true. <laughs> Taylor Swift has that um, cornered, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Yeah, Thanks thank very you. much. All right. And uh, best of luck with the book. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Right. Take care. Take care. Bye now. Okay.